Wonderful. Good morning, everybody. And thanks for joining in on today's training. The title of our training today is All Shades Are Worthy, Connecting Colorism, Skin Lightening Products, and Your Health. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to learn today. So we're going to learn how skin lightening products can be bad for our health, how to read and understand the labels on skin lightening products. We're going to talk about what colorism is. We're also just going to discuss factors like um, how colorism can affect how we feel about ourselves and others' beauty. And then lastly, we're going to talk about how the use of skin lightening products is an environmental justice issue. So the first thing to know about skin lightening products is that skin lightening products come in many forms. They can come in the form of creams, lotions, soaps, pads, and even injectables. And another important thing to know is that skin lightening products aren't always labeled as skin lighteners. Sometimes they um, will use labeling such as skin bleaching, skin evening, skin correcting, blemish fading, or other related names. And so here I have pictured on the right a number of um, common skin lightening products. And so one of the other important things to know about skin lightening products is that skin lightening products are sources of potentially toxic chemicals. Skin lightening products on your body can actually result in toxic chemicals in your body. And this is true not only for the person who directly applies skin lightening products to them, but also to their skin, um, but also for pregnant women who use skin lightening products, their developing fetus can also be potentially exposed. And so next I wanted to go through um, three of the hazardous chemicals that tend to be in skin lightening products. And the first chemical I wanna talk about today is hydroquinone. And so hydroquinone in skin lightening products is dangerous because it has been associated um, with numerous health problems. And these health problems include blurry vision and eye damage, skin discoloration and rash, and even skin cancer. Now, one thing to know about hydroquinone is that hydroquinone um, can be prescribed by dermatologists. So if you've been prescribed uh, hydroquinone from your dermatologist, um, then that's relatively safe compared to the um, hydroquinone that's going to be in skin lightening products. And the reason for this is if you're taking hydroquinone or using hydroquinone under the supervision of a doctor, then they're making sure that you're getting an appropriate dose. They're also letting you know about any adverse health effects and how to look out for those health effects. Whereas if you are um, using hydroquinone in an over-the-counter skin lightening product, you don't have any idea about what the dose is that you're being exposed to, and then you might not um, be as aware of the potential side effects. So hydroquinone is safe to use if it's prescribed by your doctor, um, but hydroquinone is not safe if it is a product that you're purchasing over-the-counter by yourself. And then the next hazardous chemical um, that is often found in skin lightening products is mercury. And mercury can also have numerous health impacts, but these health impacts are slightly different from those um, of hydroquinone. So mercury is a neurotoxin, which means it can cause damage to our nervous systems. And mercury can cause headaches, memory loss, and other nervous, other nervous system damage. It can also cause skin discoloration and scarring, as well as kidney damage. And so um, one of the things I had mentioned in an earlier slide is that if pregnant women are using um, skin lightening products, that the toxins in those products can get into their body and then also be passed on to the developing fetus. And uh, this is also true with mercury. And because of this um, and numerous other reasons, the U.S. government and also the state of New York has banned mercury from skin lightening products. But we still see that there are many skin lightening products with mercury in them. 
And it's really important to note that because mercury is a neurotoxin, it is particularly harmful for the developing nervous system of babies and children. And so mercury can damage a child's nervous system and, and cause um, learning issues and also memory problems. And this is really important because for children that are in the household, Mercury that is in skin lighteners can very easily vaporize at room temperatures. And so if a adult in the household is using a skin lightener containing mercury, those mercury vapors can um, spread in the household and also cause mercury poisoning in children that are in the house. So just because a child is not directly using a skin lightening product does not mean that they're safe from the mercury that can be in skin lightening products. And then the last class of chemicals that I wanna talk about um, that are often found in skin lightening products are steroids. And so steroids can cause high blood pressure, which can lead to heart problems. Steroids like hydroquinone and mercury can also cause skin damage and um, steroids can cause acne and painful skin sores and also lead to high uh, blood sugar and um, increased risk of diabetes. And so now that we know that there are these three big um, classes of or types of harmful chemicals that are in skin lightening products, the next question is, well, how do we actually avoid uh, the potentially toxic skin lightening products when we're shopping? So let's talk about tips for when we shop. So one of the most important things to do is to read the labels of your products when you're shopping. So try to avoid products with some of those most toxic chemicals that we discussed, hydroquinone, steroids, and mercury. But I will give you one caveat soon. And so as I mentioned, um, avoid products that have mercury, hydroquinone, and steroids on the labels. So be very careful to read your labels. But the big caveat is that some products that contain mercury actually won't have mercury listed on the label. They either will completely leave mercury off the label or they might use other names for mercury. So you can see names like HG, which is um, the abbreviation for mercury, mercuric iodide, mercuric chloride, and mercurial a whole a whole list of um, alternative names for mercury and also mercury compounds. And so one of the really difficult things about mercury is that um, you won't always see it clearly listed on the label. But because um, com skin lightening manufacturers will oftentimes include mercury and not put it on the label because it's illegal for these products to contain mercury, they might actually put other signs on the label that are signaling to you that this product contains mercury. So for instance, if a product says to avoid contact with silver, gold, rubber, aluminum, and jewelry, then that and that this product will ruin your jewelry, then this product may contain mercury. And that's a sign that it may contain mercury. And so um, additional tips for when you shop is really the best thing to do and the safest thing to do is just avoid skin lighteners overall. And so, as I mentioned early on um, in our discussion, there are lots of different phrases used for skin lighteners. And so what you wanna do is avoid the products that essentially are promising you the same thing. They're all promising to lighten the skin in some way, whether it be in a little spot or all over the body. So skin brighteners, um, correcting or evening skin tone, whether that be creams, um, sprays, etc., skin whitening and bleaching lotions, dark spot removers or dark spot serum, um, skin correcting soaps, etc. If something is say is uh, saying that it's going to remove a dark spot locally, that's still doing localized skin lightening. If it's saying it's going to make um, your elbows less dark or underarms or knees, these things um, tend to all be skin lighteners. They're just being advertised um, slightly differently. And all of these products might expose you to hydroquinone, mercury, and steroids. And the reason for this is because 
these toxic ingredients are highly effective at lightening the skin. Um, mercury can um, actively block the skin's production of melanin, um, which gives a skin its uh, darker pigmentation. And so many of these products that are promising these lightening um, these lightening results are using these toxic chemicals to achieve those results. Okay, so another tip for when you shop is really just being skeptical. And another way to be skeptical is if a product has a missing label, then you have no way um, to look at what ingredients are in that product. Also, if a product has um, a handmade label or handwriting of, on it, also be skeptical of that. You know, we all understand that there are small businesses in our communities um, that may have, you know, homemade labels that are printed out and such. Um, if you're purchasing um, from a trusted, reputable person and you know that it has non-toxic ingredients in it, um, that's, that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here are um, products that are being um, shipped around or can even be mass produced and are not including those labels. And um, it's just really important to do those proper label checks, even when uh, it is from a um, kind of local, let's say beauty apothecary or such, you just always wanna check what's in those labels and make sure that you know um, that the ingredients are non-toxic. And so, as I mentioned before, um, in New York State has recently enacted a ban on skin lighteners containing mercury. And um, this ban actually um, was just passed in 2022. And the reason that we actually have new legislation in this area is because mercury and skin lighteners is becoming a bigger problem in the state of New York and just also worldwide. And Another important thing um, to acknowledge is that the zip code where we live um, can really impact our ability to shop for non-toxic products. So we act for environmental justice, which is the environmental justice organization where I'm based, um, actually visited stores in Northern Manhattan and found that um, local beauty salons and also um, small beauty supply stores commonly sold skin lightening products and other products with toxic chemicals in them. Toxic chemicals are rampant in beauty products, um, but some of the most notoriously toxic chemicals like those we're talking about today are actually found in beauty products that are uh, marketed towards women and femme identifying people of color. And so that brings me to the second half of the discussion today, which is environmental racism in the beauty industry. So one thing to note as we get started on this discussion is that fighting environmental racism in, in the beauty industry is really similar um, to fighting environmental racism and other issues, such as our fight for climate justice and housing justice and even language justice. And it's really important to remember that people of color really deserve to have access to clean air, affordable housing, um, not only affordable, but high quality health care and food, but then also safe personal care products that are not going to do damage to our bodies. And so products with toxic chemicals in them that are marketed to women of color are an environmental justice issue because these toxic chemicals in these products are adding on to the pre-existing burden of toxic chemical exposure that communities of color are already facing. Um, so this is a perpetuation of environmental injustice. And another thing that's really important to note is the racism within the beauty industry itself. And so one thing that you know we can ask ourselves is, well, what does beauty look like? And if you ask the media, um, this is typically the picture um, that is portrayed in mainstream media of beauty. And so what you'll see here, um, this is select covers um, from People Magazine. And what you'll see is that the majority of the models that are pictured 
um, are either white women or um, are women that are women of color, but then are essentially being forced to conform to some Eurocentric beauty standard with the exception um, of a few of the models here. And um, when it comes to Eurocentric beauty standards in the media, in addition to um, things that we see every day, like um, those People magazines, where you just see disproportionately the representation of beauty is white women and um, Eurocentric beauty standards. But what we also see are maybe more subtle ways um, that racism and actually colorism, which we'll talk about soon, actually pervades our concepts of beauty. So for instance, here um, in this article, we can actually see some um, depictions of beauty and um, preparations for weddings. And you know, one of the things that um, you know, tends to be marketed is that while well, in preparation of getting married, you know, you might want to have your skin look more dewy or glowy. Um, but the undertone of what that's saying is that there's a preference um, for lighter or brighter skin. And so all of this is really to say is that historically and still today, um, we've been taught that beauty looks a particular way and really the way that um, beauty has been presented by the mainstream media and society is really tied to colonialism and racism and is really a, an image of um, Eurocentric beauty standards. But in reality, um, beauty is very diverse. And um, you know, pictured here is really um, highlighting more of the diversity of beauty. And so this, these images in contrast to let's say um, those covers of People magazine are much more representative of the breadth of beauty that we have um, in our communities and society. And so uh, one of the big things when it comes to racism in the beauty in industry specifically is that um, racism and these Eurocentric or European centric beauty standards have really glorified features like fair skin and also straight hair. And so one of the things is, is that skin lightening products have really been marketed as the answer um, to dark skin, as if having dark skin um, were a problem. And not only is um, the fact that skin lightening products in themselves, because they're perpetuating um, these racist and colonial ideas, like not only is that a problem for our societies and our well being, but also these um, skin lightening products that are being used to conform to these beauty standards are also highly toxic biologically um, to our bodies. And not only um, to the people that use them, but also, as I mentioned before, um, the developing fetus and also children in the household. And another thing that I wanna talk about is colorism. And so colorism is actually discrimination that's based on skin tone that can happen within a racial or ethnic group. So for instance, I'm Chicana, I'm Mexican American. So the way that colorism um, would look like within the Mexican American community would be if among Mexican Americans, there was um, discrimination against darker skin Mexican Americans um, and um, more of a glorification of lighter skin Mexican Americans. And we see that this colorism actually plays out um, across racial and ethnic groups. It's something that's um, quite common because it has its roots in colonization and white supremacy. And so, you know, just to reiterate, colorism is the belief that light or fairer skin is better and that um, people with it have more attractive features or quality. So it's important to note that colorism affects a lot of us. And so there's a study by the Pew Research Center that showed that 62% of U.S. Latinos said that having darker skin hurts their ability to get ahead. And there's also a documentary by CNN called White Lies. And I really recommend this documentary. It's about the skin lightening industry worldwide. 
and um, racism in the beauty industry. And so here are just a couple of quotes um, from that documentary. You are perceived as beautiful, clean, and a much better person. And when referring to um, having lighter skin, you will not be selected for the job when referring to having darker skin. Taunted, teased, harassed, and looked down upon when referring to having darker skin. And we Act for Environmental Justice had um, recently conducted a study in northern Manhattan in the South Bronx when they surveyed um, nearly 300 individuals. Um, these were all women and femme-identifying individuals. And what they found was that about 25% of survey respondents had used skin lighteners at some point in their life, but then also there were sentiments shared um, by survey respondents such as light skin makes a woman look more beautiful or the perception that light skin makes a woman look younger. So this is showing some of the societal pressures um, that bring people to use skin lighteners. And then also um, these characters shown down at the bottom um, were uh, pulled from an article that was looking at the skin lightening industry and the intersection between colorism, colonialism, and patriarchy in India as um, kind of driving the skin lightening industry. And so here um, with these um, characters, what they're showing is um, kind of general like re representations or sentiments when it comes to um, skin color. So in reference to the lightest skin um, character here in the bottom left, it says Indian jackpot. And then um, in the this kind of second lightest, almost foreigner, hashtag blessed. And then when it comes to the two um, darker skin um, characters, we have the sentiment of beautiful for a dark girl. And then lastly, just try some treatment. And so you can see that these sentiments, um, if imposed by society and social networks and family groups, um, could push one to use skin lightening products that are hazardous to our health. So what can we do about this? So one really important thing to do is just to have the hard conversations um, with ourselves and others. So um, women of color in the United States and worldwide are all um, balancing societal pressures, um, personal agency, and then also having these pressures to use um, products, not only skin lighteners, but also kind of the myriad of other um, toxic beauty products and really having to balance um, these pressures to use these products with the potential harm that they can do to our bodies and our families. And just figuring out what the right decision um, for you to make in terms of what products to use, it can be highly personal and sometimes it can be really difficult, um, but having these hard conversations is a good starting place. And when it comes to colorism particularly, and also some of these um, really toxic beauty standards, words matter. Um, so we should be careful in our everyday lives to choose words carefully um, when talking to others, especially those that we have a lot of influence on, like our friends and our family members um, and young people in our social circles. Um, and so choose our words carefully, especially when you're commenting on some, someone's skin. And then, you know, we oftentimes will say words or phrases um, that perpetuate an idea that fair or light skin is favorable, and you might not always even realize it. Um, so for instance, um, in discussions with some of the other community-based organizations that we work with in Northern Manhattan, you know, there are a couple of phrases um, you know, that came up in conversation, like don't drink so much tea, it will make your skin dark, or don't stay out in the sun too long. So these phrases, you know, what they have kind of underneath them that's not directly said is that having dark skin is bad. So in these ways, in these subtle ways, we actually perpetuate um, this idea that having dark skin is bad and having fair skin is good. So we should be really careful um, to, um, to, you know, make sure that we're, we're not doing this. And now um, kind of going back to where we started, 
what are the other areas that we can take action to protect ourselves from the hazards of skin lighteners? Remember, we always want to read our labels. So avoid products with mercury, hydroquinone, and steroids listed on the labels. And just remember that mercury might not always be on the label. So look for it in other names, but really the best thing to do is just to stay away from skin lightening products in general. And if the product says to avoid contact with jewelry, that can be a sign that mercury is in the product. And um, again, when it comes to reading labels, you know, we don't just mean the labels on the back with all the ingredients, but read the promises um, that are on the product. So different names, but the same promise. So look out for things that say dark spot removing, look out for things that say skin correcting, that say skin brightening, glowy, dewy. Um, many of these things are still skin lightening products, but just under a different name. And then be skeptical of products with no label or handwriting on the label. And you can also use these tips to check the products that you currently have at home. And again, it's just really important for us to focus on areas um, where we can take action and just, you know, remember to like share with our communities um, that we deserve to have access to non-toxic and um, safe personal care products. And people of color deserve to feel happy and flourish in all skin, all skin tones. Um, and that racism really tries to make us believe that it's only fair skin that's beautiful. And it truly is racism and colonialism that has created this pressure um, to, for, to make skin lightening products exist in the first place. And that small changes can begin with sharing what you learned with others. Talk to your friends um, and your family about this topic. And so um, just a couple other things that, you know, uh, we wanted to share with it. Take action is just remembering um, that the use of skin lightening products is really tied to colorism and the glorification of Eurocentric beauty standards. And even these small changes like educating ourselves and having these conversations um, will be beneficial. And um, lastly, We Act for Environmental Justice has a working group and a working group called Beauty Inside Out that if you look up We Act for Environmental Justice website, you can sign up for a working group. We talk about skin lighteners, but also another a number of other um, beauty justice issues. And then here I've linked some additional um, facts and resources. So the FDA now has a new website called Skin Facts, which is all about skin lighteners. And then um, New York City Department of Health has actually been going out and actively um, testing products for mercury. And so we also have a link to their webpage. Um, the Beauty Well Project out of Minnesota has a really fantastic web page um, detailing um, which skin lightening products they've um, tested and found mercury in. And then lastly, if you're um, doing shopping um, for beauty and personal care products, whether that's lotion, soap, shampoos, conditioners, um, an app that I highly recommend for checking your products to see if they have toxic chemicals is the Cleria app, C-L-E-A-R-Y-A. -E and you can use this on your smartphone um, and also in your web browser. And that's it for today's training. I hope that um, you are able to walk away with some new information and feel empowered about how to avoid hazardous chemicals from skin lightening products. Thank you.